Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another Cricut project. So today I'm going to be showing you how to cut three shadow boxes out of cardstock. But the main point of the video is to compare the cardstocks. So I tend to use Cricut materials. Um, I like that they are always compatible with my Cricut machine. I don't have to do a bunch of test cuts. I can just pick the material from the drop down file and I know it's going to cut properly. Um, but sometimes in my area, they can be hard to get a hold of. Whereas things like Recollections paper is available at Walmart, it's available at Michael's, um, and it is just easier to get my hands on. But where Cricut paper, cardstock, comes in lots of different colors and varieties and you know, shimmer paper, cardstock, glitter cardstock, party foil, all the things. It is also about 80 pound paper, so it's a little thicker, it's a little more durable. Recollections is 65 pound paper and not as durable. And so I wanted to do a comparison between the two materials, direct Cricut cardstock to Recollections cardstock. I also wanted to compare their foil paper. So I did the Recollections foil paper to Cricut's um, shimmer paper, which is similar, their glitter cardstock, their corrugated cardboard, their party foil. So we have Recollections cardstock and foil cardstock. Then I have a combination of Cricut's cardstock, glitter cardstock, shimmer paper, and corrugated cardstock or cardboard. Then I decided, while this is beautiful and I love all of the materials, if you don't have four or five different paper packs, perhaps you wanna buy one paper pack and call it done, um, especially if you're not going to use those materials um, repeatedly like I do, I do lots of paper projects. I wanted to see, can I buy one Cricut pack with multiple colors that all coordinate and that are compatible to do a shadow box. And so this is one of the Cricut and Martha Stewart collaborations. It has six sheets, including transfer tape, so five usable sheets. And I made an entire shadow box just out of that kit. So different materials, we've got um, cardstock, we've got vinyl, and we've got glitter cardstock that didn't actually come in the pack, but I messed up the sheet that did come and had to improvise because Sometimes everybody messes up. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you all the materials. We're going to cut everything. I will show you how to assemble it. And then we'll do a final look at the quality of the cuts and where the best bang for your buck is. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's open Cricut Design Space. And I have already bookmarked a bunch of different shadow boxes or layered cardstock projects, um, everything from <laughs> fun krakens to moths, just anything. I literally searched through the Cricut Access Library for shadow box or um, Cricut cardstock, and just I literally just favorited everything that I saw that I liked. So I think we're gonna start with one of these Access projects that way we can easily grab the files. I'm leaning towards this turtle. So let's see, four layers. Okay, that'll be easy. I say that now. So let's go ahead and edit a copy and see what colors we need for this. And what size it is. So he's eight by eight, so that's doable. Looks like they have it all laid out for us. Solid background. This will be our front, front layer, second layer. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our cardstock and organize our colors. Okay, so now that I've picked all of my colors, going to put them on our cutting mats. So we're using a light grip mat for this because cardstock is easily bent and torn and curled. So we don't want it to be stuck on our mat or really much. 
overly much. We don't want it to grip our mat. So line it up. We want it to be fully within that 12 by 12 area. And then we're just gonna push it down. I'm not gonna use my brayer for this. I'm just gonna use my hands. Not as pr enough pressure for cardstock on a light grip mat. So five colors for this project. We've got our front gray, which for this project, I have picked a shimmer paper. So this is a smooth kind of cardstock. I have used a corrugated cardboard, dark blue for our very back layer. And this you're going to put on your mat upside down. So the corrugated part is actually facing the mat and we are cutting into the smooth portion of our material. So we will need to mirror this one or we will not have that corrugated texture. Then we have our two middle layers, which are the pink and the purple. And these are your standard Cricut bulk card stock. This is a sampler. So it comes with all these different colors inside. And if you, if you just wanted to get one pack that's going to have a bunch of different colors and make your entire shadow box out of that pack, you could do that with something like this. I think it has five colors. Usually has them listed somewhere, but pink, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So you could do all five colors. These are jewels. So they aren't exactly oceany, which is why I've gone and delved into some other packs. Then for our seahorses, I decided to spice it up a bit with some glitter cardstock. So this way we will have a true representation of how the full line of Cricut's cardstocks cut. So we will cut our shimmer paper, our standard cardstock, our glitter cardstock, and our corrugated cardboard. And then we will examine the cuts, take them off the cutting mats, and put them together into our shadow box. And that is the full lineup of most. There might be one or two other pieces, but this is most of Cricut's main cardstocks right here. So we'll get a good idea of how to cut all of these. And then of course, we're going to compare these to some other brands. So we're gonna get started cutting these out. All right, so now that we've got our colors all sorted out, let's jump back in here. I am going to reassign this to a blue color. And uh, we put our corrugated cardstock on a cutting mat and we don't actually need to cut it. So, yay yeah, us. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and hit make it. We, we really don't even need this on here. Okay, now we're ready to go. We are going to cut these all on a mat. Perfect, and since we're not doing the corrugated cardboard, we don't need to mirror anything. Turn on our maker. All right, so this very top layer here is going to be our shimmer paper. So let's browse for shimmer paper. Perfect. I always set the default to more. I find I get cleaner cuts that way. That may just be because my blade is not 100% new, but even with a new blade, I just find that it works well. Load it in. And hit go. All 
All right. Layer one done. We will unload these all at the end. If you only have one or maybe two mats, you can of course unload them and reload them in between each cut. But if you have multiple mats, um, which is how I like to cut my projects, you can easily just do it all at once. So now we are going to do our two cardstock layers. Let's search for cardstock and it is the standard Cricut cardstock, which does not have a weight. I have experimented quite a bit and I find that this medium cardstock, 80 pound option typically works really well for our standard Cricut cardstock. So that is what I use. We are going to cut our purple layer first and then we'll do the pink layer. Dun, da, da, da. So, you know, it's asking for this top layer next, so I guess we'll do the top layer next. This is, of course, our glitter card stock. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so for this one, we've definitely got a lot of those little details already popping out. So that'll be interesting to see how this works. Let's go ahead and add our card stack in here. least our pink cardstock and then we do need to cut that corrugated cardboard just because it's just a square we're doing an 8 inch box not a 12 inch so still have to cut it success why didn't y'all point that out Dun, 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 dun. So last but not least, let's reset our machine since I turned off the square and uh, tell it we do need to cut the square. We need to cut it on a mat. And there it is. Now it's just a square, so mirroring it is redundant and ridiculous, but I will mirror it just to show you that here's the mirror button for an important layer like this, where it would matter which side the turtle was on, you want to mirror. For a square, it is irrelevant, but you know, it's the principle of the matter. All right, we're going to grab corrugated. There it is. Set it to mo mo mo. Cut our square. Ooh. 
riveting. This is great content. I know, you're all enthralled. Don't look away, you'll miss it. All right, that took forever. I'm so tired now. Okay, <laughs> in all honesty, we are going to cut out our second, maybe third, I don't know. I know we're making at least two shadow boxes because I want to use my materials from Michaels as well to compare. But before we do that, let's go ahead and remove everything from our cutting mats so that we can reload these with the cardstocks from Michaels. Just turn my computer off for this. So we'll start with this one. And the basic rule of thumb is that you want to turn your piece over and instead of curling your material away from your mat, which you can see already has put a a bend or a curve in this. You want to turn it over, put your hand here, and curl your mat away from your material, keeping your material flat at all times. That way, you have a flat end result. Make sure we've got everything cut here. This side had a little bit of trouble, maybe because it was our last piece, maybe because it's that corrugated cardstock. It usually will come through with just a little bit of help. All right, so. These edges will be hidden by all the top edges, but I don't want to be able to see this white part of the corrugated portion, which, there we go. I'm like, it was cut, but apparently this side had a little bit of an attitude. So, let's see if that happens with the rest of the pieces. But here is our back layer, that corrugated cardstock, which I thought would give us a really fun oceany texture. So now, regular cardstock. Now for this one, we have a couple options. Typically, we're just gonna take it off the mat and then weed it. So let's see how that works, okay? If we start running into problems with all the details, we'll stop, remove the inside first, and then weed it. Turn it over. And then start to pull it away. And this is where you typically will have the most problems is it's very hard to keep your, your pieces flat when they're cut so much. So let's go ahead and weed this interior portion out so that we can keep the rest of it flat. And by weed it out, I mean I'm just going to kind of pull it off. That way we can hold the portions we really need flat, flat. Let's carefully keep pulling this middle portion up. This is the part we don't need. We are discarding all of this. I don't think I'm gonna worry about all these little interior pieces. They will probably come up as we do the underside. Now let's see. As I'm pulling, I'm just grabbing all those little pieces and I'm pushing them down so that they stay flat. 
Dum -da -da -da. So now we can take this off. Take all these little pieces off that we didn't retrieve. First time. That was a stubborn one. Set this guy aside. I typically do put the clear sheets back on immediately, but we're getting ready to reload these. So I'm just gonna set it aside. All right, take the rest of these mineral pieces out. And voila, we are left with flat turtle coral. Just how we like it. Now, obviously this is not the next layer, but you can see how they will all start to fit together. So, I'll put this guy up here. Let's keep on trucking. This is, this all we're gonna do is we're gonna take them all off very carefully. piece of the puzzle. Now you can go through and add a bit of foam tape in between all the layers to pop them up, especially in your shadow box. And that creates a lot of depth, but look at all those layers. Look at all of those layers. So we are going to go ahead and move this aside for now. And we're going to cut our second shadow box um, out of our Michael's paper. So I bought these two sections, sections, but these two pieces, they are both uh, recollections from Michael's and I got some foil and some regular. These are 65 pound cardstock. So this is their standard cardstock from Michael's. The Cricut is 80 pound, so it is typically easier to work with, but I wanna do a comparison. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this and see. With our Cricut cardstock so far, we had this one section of the coral on the blue that didn't cut through all the way. And the um, back corrugated piece that that one edge had a problem, which I don't understand, whatever. And then this top piece where the sticky backing gave us problems, but I think that was user error. If I had realized there was a backing, I would have put this face down on my mat and cut it through the back and it would have sliced through both layers. Uh, if you pay attention to that kind of stuff, you will have less problems, but I just cut that not realizing it was there. So let's go ahead and grab another file from the access library. All right, let's head back to um, Cricut Access. We're gonna go to our bookmarked projects and let's pick another file that we can cut out of all of our pretty pinks and rose golds. And I'm leaning towards this lunar moth. Let's see how many layers this is. Not sure, let's see. Replace. All right, so this is, this is just a bl uh, blue outline it looks like. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted to move this one. All right, so blue outline. Then we have 
top layer. Including our top layer, which could do in vinyl, I suppose, or we could leave this off depending on what we want to use with our cardstock. But if we want to keep it solely cardstock, probably leave this top layer off so that all of the squares will fit together. So let's save this so that I can keep it separated to my collection. And let's pick our colors. So I'm going to go back to the main screen here. So I can see how she layered her colors. Okay, so ideally I want to use only colors from these two packs so that like with our Cricut Shuttle Box, it's a complete recollections um, comparison. Whereas the first one is a full Cricut comparison. So I'm going to go ahead and pick, oh, we've got like a, kinds of stuff. All right, so let's see what colors these are. And I think this is actually, yep, the back of these. I don't know why I thought that was like, oh, we've got a cardstock cardstock in here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do this for our top layer and our very back layer because we're gonna have kind of a cutout on top of the very back layer so this color will just shine through those cutouts. And I think we're gonna go ahead and do this for the cutouts. Either that or the blue. Let's pull one of each. So then I need five more layers. We've got five layers here, so let's go ahead and Get one of each. I'm just trying to pick fairly flat layers. You know what I mean, Jillian? So that we have nice pieces to start with. and put this aside. So this will give us a nice blue instead of the silver. I think that'll give us a nice contrast. And then I think I'm just going to go in order kind of. I'm going to go the peach in the back, then the white, and then in decreasing order of our shades. So our darkest color, light, this on top. I think hopefully that will all stand out. The main thing when you're working with shadow boxes is you need enough contrast between the layers that you can see the different detail. And when you're working with a pack like this, there's obviously less contrast than when you're working with all these different jewel tones. So I'm going to turn this top layer off and then we will see after we cut everything if we want to add a vinyl layer or not. But for now we're going to stick with our eight pieces. And you can see that the, the top layer has the least outline 
second, third, fourth. So the, the more background we get, the, the lower down in the box we're going. So that's how we're going to keep track when we go to our customization, customization screen here. Hopefully it'll keep them in order, but you know, never does. Alrighty. So yeah, why has it done this to us? You know what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a screenshot of this. That way, as we're cutting, if we need confirmation of which layer is which, we can just go back to the screenshot. So we know our first layer is this one. We're going to cut that one first. On mat. Now make sure that these are all size. Perfect. Those all look much better. So let's get our maker set up. All right, we're going to search for cardstock. And we're going to go with light cardstock, 65 pounds for this recollection. We might go with default on the regular, but for the foil, we'll go with more. So our first layer is a foil layer. Let's load her in. So let's go ahead, pop this off before we keep going so that I can get this mat and we can test how the cuts did before we cut everything. Double check that we have our settings right. And we'll do that again with the first piece of actual cardstock since this is foil cardstock. Foil cardstock is typically a little thicker than regular cardstock, so I'm not super, knock on wood, worried about these pieces. But, you know, I'm worried about everything. So far, so good. How it cut. All right, we might want to do more because some of the straight cuts need a little more pressure. Most of the cuts seem to be popping right out, so I'll probably go through and carefully do this while the next piece is cutting, but they seem to be just fine. I do think I'll do more pressure was the right setting for this one. But yeah, I'm a little not sure why more of these aren't popping out. I'm guessing it's the type of like foil card stock that it is. It didn't cut 100% of the way through, but yeah, I mean, a little persuasion it's coming out but you can see where it's still stuck together in quite a few places, unlike the Cricut uh, shimmer paper, which would be similar to this. It did not have that problem. You see everywhere that I'm having to kind of pop it off, then you have these little cuts left. 
It's a little thing, but this is set to more. This is set to the right paper. These should just be popping out. So that's a little frustrating. But we're gonna keep going. It'll be fine. So I think this more worked a little better, but still not perfect. Out. All those little tiny dots and things on the seahorses cut just fine out of that thicker cardstock. It's thinner cardstock is always an issue. Quality, y'all, is worth it. This is gonna look pretty, but it's just gonna take extra work to get all these pieces out. But it is going faster. I'm able to do most of this with my fingers without the tearing that the first layer was doing. Well, oh, spoke too soon. Tore a little bit there. For the most part. Only a little bit of tearing. All right, so we're gonna keep going and I am going to cut the rest of these layers. This is all the same, you know, either this light card stock or the thicker card stock. So I will see y'all once all the layers are cut out. Ta-da! So I love the color combination, but you can see when you get up close that there are lots of little imperfections in the cuts for this card stock, no matter how careful I was. Um, now, once you get it in a frame with either, you know, compression or the foam in between all the layers, it's really not going to be a huge difference. But, bum, da, da, da. <clears throat> the thicker Cricut cardstock just has much cleaner lines. And you know, especially if I was making these as gifts or to sell, that makes a difference. When you're just making them for personal, then it's it's completely up to you, you know, which route you wanna go. Now, I have two more things to show you. First of all, I accidentally cut this layer, this white layer out of the wrong color. And so instead of just tossing it, I wanted to show you what it looks like when you take Cricut. I wanted to show you what it looks like when you take cardstock off the wrong way. So I already showed you at the very beginning that you should flip your mat over and that you should, you know, keep it flat while you are pulling or curling the mat away. But if you don't do that, if you just take your material and you start to pull it like you would a vinyl, you are going to get curled cardstock. And the harder you pull, the more curled it will be. So, I don't give any regard for this poor little lunar moth and I just pull and I'm ripping him and more than that what I want you to see is how curly he gets so obviously this is unusable <laughs> and even if I'm careful and I try to take this piece off uh, flat 
let's go try to get this piece off as flat as possible. Like that's not terrible, but it is not half as flat as its counterparts that we flipped over and took off. Now these thinner pieces, you know, once we get them in a frame, they'll be fine. Or if we glued them down, they'd be fine. But anytime you're working with thin little pieces, they're going to have a tendency to not be stick straight. But there you go. There is the difference. Rips, tears, curls. Stay classy, my friends. We are going to move on to the last piece of this puzzle, which is a last shadow box. I'm going to do one more, so we'll have a third comparison. We have our Michael's 65 pound cardstock example. We have our multiple Cricut layer example where we pulled from shimmer paper, glitter cardstock, regular cardstock, and corrugated cardboard. So that's four different packs. I wanna show you one last piece from one pack. So this is a mixed material pack from Cricut. They have these in all different colors, but this is all pinks and blushes and rose golds. So it is six sheets, including one of transfer tape because there is a layer of vinyl in here. So we have a light pink, a dark pink, a shiny party foil, a silver glitter, this is a shimmer paper, and our vinyl. So we're going to cut our final um, piece. I found a five sheet uh, shadow box and we're going to cut it out of this set so that if you don't want to go buying four or five different pieces, we can do one that with coordinating colors from one pack. Now, two of these are cardstock. We have a party foil, we have a shimmer paper, and we have a vinyl. So I'm trying to decide here. We have two options. Vinyl can go on top of cardstock. So I could do this as our top layer. Or I could cut a square out of this and it could be our bottom layer. Or it could be any of the middle layers. I don't really want to do one of the middle layers out of this because we have words. I picked a pretty um, pink themed baby shadow box for this one. So I think we're going to make this be the back layer. Because I think peeking through the rainbow that would be pretty. So then we'll make our pink, our rainbow. And we'll make the vinyl our top because we can actually do our vinyl right onto our cardstock. So let's go ahead and do the top two layers first. And I'll put those together. Okay, so I messed up the vinyl for the top completely. I accidentally <laughs> ripped this cloud off and I didn't think about the fact that this moon would have to lay over all these layers. And so I had to scrap the vinyl, which is disappointing because I really wanted to use solely this pack, but that was user error. I should have made the vinyl be this back layer and the party foil be the top layer. If you're doing this, do that. But to save the project, I just cut out the top out of some glitter cardstock, and I think it still looks really fabulous. So we have our turtle completely foamed together. We have our lunar moth foamed together. And I have 
most of our Hello Baby foam together. I have left the top layer for us to do together so that y'all can see the process. It is very easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some double-sided foam tape. This is uh, very thin because for like this piece, you could use thicker, but we also needed to put it behind all these teeny tiny little layers of the moth's wings. And so I tend to prefer the skinnier tape so that whether I'm putting it behind these teeny tiny little stars or behind a larger section, it works either way. Now they come in a two pack. So you can see this is the other one. This is how much tape we've used for these three. So we've still got plenty left. I could make three more and still have enough for a couple left over. So it's fairly, fairly affordable. Not that I'm selling it, but just letting you know. So there's a couple ways to do this. But typically what I like to do is go around the curve for most of these areas with a circle because we want our piece to be propped up on the outside edges and the inside edges. So I'm going to come around here and I'm just going to follow the curve until I get to the first cloud. And that is because the clouds need to stand up on their own. And so instead of going past the clouds, which I could, I could easily just do a whole circle and then come back and put some on the clouds. Oh, dogs want to say hi. I'm just going to skip that and I'm just going to put a piece on my cloud, right like this. Now your question is going to be when it lines up here, oh puppy, um, like this, this is going to go over several layers. So we might need a second or third piece underneath the, the moon to get him fully propped up. But we'll do that at the end because I find that easier. So we go ahead and put some on all of our clouds. And likewise, I'm going to cut teeny tiny pieces so that our stars are popped up as well. So the whole point of a multi-layer piece like this is that there's a shadow under all of these little pieces. So if I don't put any under the stars and they lay flat against the bottom layer, it won't have that same effect. Now, some of them will kind of, like this one is a lot stronger. You can see he's here. And this one might be big enough to not worry about it. Um, they might kind of stand up on their own. Like I didn't put anything behind the Hello Baby because those letters were fairly strong. I did put some behind the rainbow because that party foil was not strong enough. So it's all a judgment call. Love that this stuff is very easily bent. So now we're not gonna really need a whole strip here because um, we've already got three pieces. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and put one at the top around here. I'm going to bring it down past this star to the bottom here. Hands are totally in the way. Sorry, y'all. There we go. It's 
So that leaves us with the outside pieces, and we have a couple options for these. We can go insane. Well, not insane. We can be thorough, okay? And we can do an entire piece, right? From corner to corner if we want to make sure that the entire side is popped up. Or for say this side, where we've already got quite a bit of support in the middle, we could do a piece at the bottom and at the top and not worry about the middle section. I always make sure that there is a piece on the four corners because we want the corners to be strong. And at least a little piece directly in the middle. And while it doesn't like to come up, it will if you pull it up hard enough. Just be careful you don't rip your paper. So that is probably you know, your best, if you're trying to save tape, like you don't necessarily need an entire line. You could do a couple pieces and save tape, make this go a lot further. And on my first one, my little lunar moth, that is exactly what I did. I used little tiny pieces with all those cutouts to make the tape go really far and to make sure it wasn't visible and any of the cutouts. But on these larger pieces, where we have more of a more coverage, I got a little tired of doing such a meticulous job. And so you have to you have to decide for yourself between the value of your tape and your time. This is not a hard thing to do, but it, it does take a while if you're doing several of them. So I'll let you decide for yourself. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to sit here and put 80 million pieces on this. We're just going to do the sides. So now I'm going to very carefully line this up at the bottom with the two corners. And then the top corners. And once it's in, in line, I'm gonna carefully press it down. Now I'm going to come through and I'm gonna put one more piece under, under this moon. Maybe I need two pieces specifically two stacked up pieces. This piece that we already have under here will pop us up on this layer, but I want to put one on this pink layer. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy in half. Put it right here. And that gives us a little bit more support. Now I can put another one with a third layer. Onto the party foil layer. There we go. And now our moon is popped up all the way down. We are, oh, we are, I am loving, not we are, I am. I'm assuming y'all are too how the foam gives us all these layers and the the shadows they were really good before when they were just compressed down to flat layers but the foam gives it that extra oomph and now if i wanted to i could easily add lights to the back of this and really light up the whole box that would be cool but i'm not doing that today instead we are going to call these 
done. So I will give you some close ups of all three shadow boxes. If you wanted to, you could easily put these in a shadow box. Um, you just need one that is deep enough to accommodate the layers. This one with its five layers is going to need a shallower box than this one with its eight, although you can always add some foam or something to the back in a deeper box if need be. Um, but I am going to go ahead and give you a close up. I will say that of all of the pieces, I definitely found um, that while the, the recollections pieces worked fine, you can see there are lots of little places where they just wrinkled a little or um, didn't cut quite cleanly enough. And if I was doing this, and this is the paper I had, and I wanted it to look fabulous, I could have easily gone in with a pair of little scissors or an X-Acto knife and cleaned all these edges up before I put it together. It would have been extra time and extra effort, especially when like these guys, the backgrounds just popped out when I took them off the cutting mat. These I already had to go in and pop out all those backgrounds because everywhere where it didn't come off cleanly, I mean, you saw I had to go in and kind of work that free. So this one, it was worth it. I mean, the colors are amazing, but definitely the Recollections paper just took a lot more energy and it doesn't look as nice without cleaning up all those edges, which I didn't do because I wanted to show you the difference. This kit looks fabulous. I really wish I hadn't messed up that vinyl layer. That was definitely me. I went back and watched the footage and when I weeded it, this cloud was here. And then when I went to put it on top, the cloud got ripped in half. So, you know, if you were careful, it would have been fine. But with the glitter cardstock, it still looks great. Um, and all of these layers cut so clean, so easy. Even with all the little stars, they just lifted right out. I think this kit was my favorite as far as materials went. It had one, two cardstocks, the party foil, this back sheet, which is actually vinyl. I thought it was shimmer paper, but it's vinyl. So I could... I could unstick this and stick it right to something. The back is essentially a giant sticker. Um, but I would I would probably use shimmer paper instead of vinyl, but the vinyl worked fine. You know, if I was thinking clearly, I would have put that party foil as the top layer and the two vinyl layers as the back so that we still had all of these fun shadows up front and the back was more flat. This piece I love and I love that the corrugated cardboard gives it that ocean texture and then we have the glitter and the shimmer paper on top. I love all of those textures together and if you have multiple sets of materials you don't have to buy each pack individually. We have our shimmer paper, our glitter card stock, our regular card stock, and our corrugated cardboard. So this is four different Cricut papers put together into one piece. Then I think it's totally worth it for the different dynamics that you get when you mix all those materials. But if we're working on a budget and you don't wanna buy four picks, this is definitely the better bang for your buck, buying just one pack, so. As far as all of the materials cut, this glitter card stock and this cluttered card stock are from the same pack. They both cut fine. Our regular card stock, I have the pink and the purple and the light and the dark pink here. Those are the same materials. They cut fine. Our corrugated card stock, you guys saw, it cut fine except for this corner tore a little bit. And you saw I had to tape this one piece of coral on that glitter. But I think, honestly, I think that's part of the design file problem. I'm going to go back and look. So for the most part, I didn't have any issues with the Cricut papers. Um, the coral just being so little and detailed took a lot more effort than the simplicity of these stars. I did have to carefully 
remove all of the negative space from these, but they were cut all the way through. They just needed help coming out. They didn't lift clear out the way the middles of this did. So there's my full long-winded explanation comparison. If you're looking for one material, I would probably go with glitter cardstock or regular cardstock and buy a pack in varying colors or a pack like this Cricut Martha Stewart pack that has so many coordinating colors. That's really pretty. If you want to make a whole bunch of them, you are going to get more sheets with a recollections pack, but you're going to have to do a lot more work. So time and money, baby, time and money. Sometimes time is money. So I will give y'all some close up shots of each of these shadow boxes. If you liked this, leave a comment down below. If you want to see other amazing Cricut projects that use cardstock, I did an entire paper peony tutorial recently. I will link that uh, to the side here. So go check that out. I've done plenty of other paper projects, but that one is my current favorite. So hope you like it. Bye.